you just mentioned global broadcasting. Yeah. And you said earlier that there were four main theories of consciousness. Yeah. What I'd like to do now is hear a bit about these four and then whether or how the order between seeing and thinking might affect which one you think is correct. Yeah. Okay, so the um, the four are the global broadcasting, which we just talked about. Okay, so global broadcasting and global workspace are the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, broadcasting in the workspace. So that is an idea put forward first by Bernie Bars, and uh, but really the person who's run with it and developed it is Stanislas Tahan, famous cognitive neuroscientist in France. And the idea is that we have um, stimulation of perceptual areas in in the back of the head. That nature has uh, has kindly divided these capacities into the front and the back, so it makes it easier to talk about them. And then those representations compete for dominance, and the the winner um, can uh, trigger, as his term, um, a large neural coalition between the front of the head and the back of the head, and that's global broadcasting. When the represent perceptual representation is globally broadcast, which takes maybe 400 milliseconds after the perception, um, then um, uh, the, that information is available to many different cognitive facilities of reasoning, problem solving, betting, reporting. Um, and he thinks that's what makes the representation conscious. Um, I think there's a slightly better version of it put forward by the, the um, neuroscientist uh, uh, Claire Sargent, another French neuroscientist, who's actually a student of Dahan's, hmm. she calls it the global playground, and I won't get into why I think it's better, but I think it is a better version of it. Um, okay, so that's that that theory. Then the uh, a, a second one that's very um, um, uh, has a lot of adherence is what's sometimes called the higher order thought theory, and I think the most impressive version of that is one put forward by uh, Hakuan Lao a neuroscientist who's in um, Japan and is just moving to Korea. Um, and the idea for, about that is that if you have a perceptual representation in the back of the head, they can, the default is it's an unconscious representation. To make it conscious, you need a frontal pointer to it, um, where, which uh, is sort of thought-like, but is cognitive pointer. And that's what makes it conscious. So there's a lot of support for that, I think. Um, a, a third view is that uh, put forward originally by Victor Lamy, a, a Dutch psychologist, uh, a neuroscientist, is that um, certain kinds of activation in the back of the head are enough for perceptual consciousness, uh, involving some kind of recurrent loops in the back of the head. And there's some experimental support for that as well. Uh, the fourth is the uh, integrated information theory put forward by Giulio Tononi and advocated uh, by Christoph Koch. And that says that uh, consciousness, so that has a slightly different focus from the other ones. The other ones are about um, uh, what makes a perceptual representation conscious. The, for the primary focus of the integrated information theory is what makes an organism or a system conscious. And that that it, it says that it's a matter of um, how differentiated the system is, a certain kind of differentiation and a certain kind of integration. So um, the uh, and that has quite it's really quite a different view from the, from the other three are more more of a piece. And I mean the, the thing that's odd, one of the things that's odd about the integrated information theory is it has some absolutely bizarre consequences. So, um, you know, a diode, some, anything with two states and a minimal memory is conscious, according to, to conscious to some extent. So that means a lot of machines, your phone is conscious to some extent. And furthermore, as a result of some, an objection made by the um, uh, quantum, mechanical, quantum, quantum mechanics guy, Scott Aronson, yeah. um, he showed that, um, and this is accepted by the, by the II, T people that if you uh, take a exclusive OR gate and put them in a, in a, in a 
a square or a, a circuit and then add more of them to that circuit, you can get something that's way more conscious than we are just by stringing together these, these, these uh, XOR gates. Huh. Now that's a very bizarre consequence. Yeah. And it's enough to make people feel like you really need some strong evidence for this. And I myself don't believe that the evidence is there, but it has some nice properties and has some advocates. <laughs> <laughs>